Well, again, everybody, and welcome back to the daily edition of the Trick Podcast of Joy on this lovely Tuesday, October 30th, 2018. How are you, my dear friend? Talking today about who is your neighbor. In other words, who is that person in your life that needs your help, that maybe you're having a hard time with? In Acts 16, it talks about what is called the Macedonian call. And I want to tell you the story and then ask a few questions that I'm also wrestling with about who should we focus on? Who are the people that need our help? I think that the reason why this question is relevant is because I think all of us by nature are very selfish and focused on our own needs. And that's not always bad, but I think that when you're dealing with crises in your life, when you have problems at work, or you're dealing with questions in terms of relationships or love, it's easy to focus on yourself and to lose sight of the need that others have. I remember years ago, I was going through, I think, uh, something with school, perhaps I was dealing with challenges, I don't know, at work. And I remember this friend of mine, she would always come into my office and ask me for advice. And I would give her the excuse that I was just too, I don't know, struggling with school, whatever it was. And so week after week, she would call me or just seek my advice in terms of her own life. And I mean, that's what I was there for, right? To help other people. But because of, let's just say it was my schoolwork, I kept putting her off. Finally, one day, (laughs) she got mad, and I guess I'm now looking back, I'm glad that she did, because she finally said, you know what, just because you're struggling, it doesn't mean that you can't help the rest of us. And I think that's what happens many times, is because we're going through some challenge at work, or in love, or maybe with our mental health, we can make it all about us. Now, is there a time and a place to focus on you and the whole idea of self-care? Well, of course. But at the same time, you have to keep those two things in balance. And so, this passage is very important when it comes to that. And so, I just want to read to you, especially this one section here. In verse 10 of Acts 16, it says, And when Paul had seen the vision, immediately we sought to go. Actually, you know what? Let me go back. That's the obedience part. Let me go back to where he gets this vision. So it says in verse 6, And they went through the region of Phrygia and Galatia, having been forbidden by the Holy Spirit to speak the word in Asia. And when they had come to Mysia, they attempted to go into Bithynia. But the Spirit of Jesus did not allow them. And I'll explain all these things here in a second. So passing by Mysia, they went down to, Tar- to uh, Troas. And here's the verse. And a vision appeared to Paul in the night. A man of Macedonia was standing there urging and saying, come over to Macedonia and help us. Come over and help us. Who is the person in your life that is telling you, please come over and help me? Now, a little background on the story. So, Paul, as you know, he is a missionary. He's an entrepreneur, we would call him today. He's someone who's starting new businesses. In his case, there were new churches, new communities of faith. But sometimes he didn't know exactly where to go next. And so in this case, he had a plan to go north, per se, northwest. But it says that the Spirit of Jesus actually... No, he was actually going... Northeast, excuse me, northeast, southeast, basically to go east. And yet it says here that the Spirit of God resisted him and said to him, Nope, this is not the way. And so my guess is that at that moment, Paul was confused. And so in the middle of that confusion, he has a vision and an angel appears to him. And it's a man from this other town, Macedonia. It's an area that's basically the opposite on the opposite end of the spectrum of where he wanted to go. And this man, in this vision, says to him, please come over, we need help. 
and it had this this sense of urgency it has it had this sense of panic like we are dying here please come and help us and if you know the story paul listens to this man to this vision and he does amazing things the town gets saved unfortunately paul so gets beaten and put in jail but that's another story and so he's facing a moment of of a moment of truth is he going to push ahead with his plan even though there's resistance there or is he going to listen to the need that is that is around him even though that's not his plan or maybe even his his desire maybe there were problems obviously as i said he was going to get beaten so you could say that god could have spared him those that that beating right but god didn't god actually let him to go to this place where yes a lot of great things happened but eventually he suffered and so i relate that to us because i think sometimes we we avoid we are pain avoiding people right we avoid difficulty when i am um, a few weeks ago we went to the dodger game and so we normally use the google app or whatever normal app but we used ways shout out to ways and ways supposed to take you through the back alleys right and so it's dodger stadium it's the N- nlcs there's a million people there and ways is having us go this way and that way and even though it sort of worked it was frustrating because it was um i don't know there were just so many turns and that's how it sometimes it feels when you're trying to get somewhere you want to avoid traffic but then the 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 new app or you have a another idea a great idea and maybe it sort of works but it's not easy and i think that I bring that up because so many times we make decisions, as I said, based on our comfort, when really we need to be thinking of other people and their need. The key phrase in this passage is, come, let me see, where is it again? Come over here, let's just call it here, come over here and help us. I think that it's a pretty tough thing to to do that to listen to even listen to the need around us you hear the news you see things on tv on social media and what works is to have leaders or people tell you what you want to hear mostly that you are being wronged that somebody's out to get you that it's the immigrants fault that it's the fault of that new neighbor that it's uh, the government is out to get you to blame everyone else and that you need to protect yourself and that message resonates with every one of us it's it's a basic human instinct to to be safe at the expense of others and i know you might be thinking oh i would never do that well back to tra- back to traffic how do you feel when someone quote cuts you off even if maybe they had a good reason to do that i don't know maybe there's something on the road that they didn't want to go over you don't care right all you care about is you were almost hit by somebody or someone made you late or the alarm didn't go off or your parents don't let you do what you want or your boss is mean i mean it's it's human nature 99 percent of the time we blame other people adam and eve what did adam do the woman you gave me what did the, what did eve do the serpent we are a blaming culture and then as i said you have ads and all kinds of messages from people in power feeding that that fear and it's disaster and we find ourselves in a time like that here in our country where everyone is out to get somebody else even in the church the answer is what this passage teaches and that is to listen to the need around you regardless of who that person is now i have no knowledge that paul 
had family in Macedonia, had any relatives there, or Silas, his companion, we don't know anything about him having a lost cousin or a grandfather that lived in this area of Macedonia. In other words, he had no reason to go there. He went because of two reasons, or two things. First, God resisted his plan. And then second, there was an obvious need around him. And so that's the question for you. What are you obviously, what are you doing that is obviously not working? <laughs> I wish I had my ghost bell here. I'm in a different room, so I don't have it. What are you currently doing that is obviously not working? At work, in your relationships, in your health, in your body, in your fitness, what are you doing? What are you eating? What are you consuming? What are you thinking about? What are you spending time doing that is obviously not working? Stop doing it. Stop doing that and try something different. I was just listening to LeBron, if you're a Lakers fan. I'm not a LeBron fan, never will be, never was. But I love my Lakers. And he was talking last night after another loss that they don't want to see me when I'm upset. Basically blaming all his young players around him for not, I don't know, running the right play. And he said, well, if you keep making the same mistake over and over again and expect a different result, that's called insanity. Obviously, that's true, right? But he's playing with young players players that will make the same mistake over and over again. That's what happens. There's, there's an obvious problem there. He's the one that needs to adapt and to lower his own little expectations of everything doing things his way. It's obviously not working what he's trying to, what he's, what he's projecting or, or asking of these young guys is, is not going to happen. They don't get it yet. They will maybe in a year, maybe in two years. And so sometimes we have this idea of what we want, but the results tell you otherwise, meaning it's not working. You keep messing up the play. You keep losing. So what happened, as I said, is uh, I was watching the actual video of the game. He, I guess there was a screen, and instead of him driving to the basket, which is what everyone thought he would do to win the game after all he is the quote goat greatest of all time not instead he passed it off to this young guy well this young guy he didn't know what to do and he got his three-pointer blocked this guy is in his second year in the league first year first time with lebron if i'm this young guy that's what 20 and i'm playing with this 32 year old best player of all time who is who has won championships lebron james i'm going to give him the ball right because i don't want him yelling at me afterwards saying why did you not give me the ball well instead he shot it because he said well he's giving me the ball i guess he's trusting me and so he shot the ball and it didn't work out anyway my point is that sometimes our plan isn't the right plan we were we're hitting our, our head against the wall and we're bleeding, and everyone's telling us, and it's obvious that you're bleeding, you're hurting. Everyone's calling 911, but you're like, no, 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 eventually I'll, I'll break through this wall and, and uh, I'll get my way. Maybe the, the, the wise thing to do would be to stop and to listen to the need around you. It's like back to my story with my friend. I was so focused on my schoolwork that I wasn't seeing the need that was in front of me. She had some problems that I could have helped her with. She was trusting me, calling, saying, help me. And I was saying, I know, I, I'm, I'm too stressed over math or whatever it was. How many times does that happen to us? So the two questions that I have for you, for all of us, is what isn't working and then second, what is the need around you? And notice I'm not asking you, what do you want to do? What is your other plan? What is easier? What is going to pay you more money? No, what is the need around you? Who are the people that are crying out for help that are actually in your purview, in your neighborhood, in your life? Regardless of whether that's where the money is, the success is, or what you want to do. If that person is crying out to you it's because god 
believes that you can help that person. He's going to give you the gifts and the, and the talents and the patience to help that person out, even if you don't want to or you don't feel qualified. But I think that where we go wrong in life is where we just want to do it our way. And we keep banging our head against the wall, hoping for a different result. And you just keep messing up the play and keep losing games. Are you losing the game of life right now? Are you losing in your current situation in, in love, in romance, in parenting? Are you losing your current in your current situation at work and yet you're still there because you need the money? Obviously, right? Everyone needs the money. But if something isn't working, I don't I don't mean to say quit or leave that relationship. I just mean to say, is there an, a different need that you need to be meeting? Not not just your own need, but somebody else's need. Is there someone calling you and asking you for help? Now, what are some of the different what are some examples of things that might be needing your help? Well, I would say there are at least five different areas. First of all, it could be your your mental health. You know, many people deal with anxiety, depression, bipolar, suicidal thoughts, you name it. But it's easy to ignore those feelings because you think, well, I'm okay. And yet maybe that's the, the Macedonian call. You need to go and, and get some help. Maybe it's second your body, your fitness, your eating and your sleeping habits and all that we call self-care. Third, it could be that someone at work needs um, well, maybe before that third, it could be your education. Is there an educational goal that you're ignoring that really, if you answer that call, would help you accomplish your dreams? And most of all, to help a ton of people. Maybe that Macedonian call is to finish school, to go back to school, to, to not give up on your education, to persevere, to not worry so much about money and a car and a girlfriend, but to focus on your educational goals. Number four, it could be your career. It may be that you're not pursuing those new opportunities because of fear, conflict, or laziness, or apathy, or you don't want to be rejected. All these things that are very normal and real, but perhaps that Macedonian call is to go and pursue that job because behind that opportunity are a lot of people that need your help. And guess what? When you focus on others, what happens? God gives you all that you want. He'll give you the money and the paycheck and the, and the relationship that you want. Matthew 6 says, seek first the kingdom of God and everything else I'll take care of. And that's what Paul did. He sought the kingdom of God, which was this call, and then God took care, took care of the rest, including suffering, including suffering. And then maybe the last thing is to always look to help the poor and the needy. Are you making room and space in your life, in your week, in your day to help those that are the least of these in the world? The homeless person in the corner, your grandmother who needs a call, a friend who, who can't, doesn't give you anything, but maybe you need to be a friend to them because they need your help. Who are the people in your life that need you more than, they, more than you need them? When was the last time you did something that was selfless and that wasn't self-seeking, that was, wasn't to your benefit? You know, one of the things that I struggle with in terms of my personality type, and I talk a lot here about personality types, I think psychology and faith uh, need to really be like best friends. We need to know both sides of, of the equation. But as an Enneagram 3, the achiever, I think that's what I am. I'm... Nah, seventy percent sure. My my biggest battle is not accomplishing more and always feeling this deep sense of failure because I didn't accomplish fifty things. I don't have a PhD by age forty, and so I, I go through a list of things every day where I just I'm either at a hundred or zero. I, I don't I don't make room for fifty or eighty or Bs or Cs. I, if it's either an A or an F, it, that's how I think, and that's not always healthy. In fact. It's often not very healthy. And so what I have to do in light of that is to slow down. 
So a few weeks ago, I had a good friend of mine who was in the hospital. And she's someone who does a ton of things for me. She's uh, my great friend. And I could have said, you know, I need to get my work done. She can't help me, blah, blah, blah. I mean, that sounds cruel. I didn't think of this, but trust me, I've thought, about, I've, I've thought this way many times before. But instead, because I've learned what really matters in life, I went, and even though you have to know this, I don't like hospitals, they give me anxiety and panic and all these things. I went, and guess what? It wasn't a very good experience for me. There were a lot of things that were difficult for me to see and etc. But I was there, I did it for her. She was the Macedonian call. She was saying, please come and help me. Please come and pray and just be here with me. And I think that you have to know yourself. If you are an achiever or you're, at a, you're a bully type, you judge other people, you're a creative, you're a peacemaker, you know, you go through the whole nine types in the Enneagram, you're more of a justice person. You have to know when your gift or your personality gets in the way of answering the call, answering the call of someone in your life that is asking you for help. Now, if you are a helper type, let's say the Enneagram 2s, especially who helps everybody, maybe for you, you need to maybe not answer every phone call, every text, every request. Maybe you need to say, you know, I cannot do that. I need to focus on me. Maybe you are your own Macedonian call. I don't advise this for everybody, but I think some types and definitely certain moments of every one of us, we need to focus on us. But I would say for the most part, at least my struggle, and I think it's a struggle of most of us, we tend to be hyper-focused on our needs, our problems, our tensions. Maybe it's time to focus on what other people need. So for me, a practical thing, a few examples. One, as I said, is visiting people in the hospital. It's not my favorite, but I do it to focus on other people. Number two is to is to listen to other people's opinions. I am very critical, no, I'm not critical, I am very, very linear. I think my ideas are the best ideas. <laughs> I've thought about everything else anyway. I'm not very empathetic often. I need to put myself in other people's shoes and listen and care and maybe try to win them over, but understanding where they're at and, and giving an answer to their need. I would say number three is to, uh, is to stop being lazy, to push myself when I don't want to uh, deal with the pain. I mean, back to the story of Paul, he answered this call, but it, it was at a cost. It cost him almost his life. This, it was the second time in just a few months that he almost got killed in obe obeying God. And so sometimes I protect myself. I think, well, that's gonna be painful. I'm gonna just stay home and do a podcast or play a song, play my guitar. <laughs> And so I wonder what your excuses are. What are the things that come up when, when you know there's a call, when, when you know there's a need? What comes up for you? Is it any of the things that I mentioned? Is it you, you judge and you think, I'm not going to help that person. They should help themselves. I would say for many people, it's the thought of, I've helped them too many times, especially if it's someone close to you, right? Your friend, your family member, a sister. You think, forget that, I'm not helping you again. I've already helped you a million times. I'm not talking about being codependent, but you know what I mean. There's that, that heart connection. At some point, it has to be God who speaks to you. And when you hear His voice, when you have that vision in the night, when you know that God is saying to you, help this person, it's better that you listen even if it costs you everything. Because why? Because on the other side of that, what happens in this story is that because of that Macedonian call and that obedience, God then used Paul in even greater ways for the sake of the kingdom of God. And again, it's about the kingdom of God. It's not about you and me. Seek first God. Seek first to do what the kingdom does. What does the kingdom do? It loves, it serves, it sacrifices even at your expense. And what's the, the reward or the promise when we do that? It says there, seek first the kingdom of God and all of these other things. What are these other things? Well, if you look at the passage, food, shelter, 
safety, security. It says all of these things will be given to you as well. That's the promise. And that is my experience. Every time that I focus on other people, it's come back to me tenfold. Every time that I focus on me and mask it as humility or service, I lose, <laughs> I waste my time. It doesn't work. I fail. My prayer for you today is that you would be other focused, that you would learn, like I am learning, to focus on other people's needs. And I believe and I declare and I am convinced that when we do so, we will truly usher the kingdom of God. We will make other people better. We will see lives be changed. We will touch the world with the grace of God. Thank you for listening. Make sure that you share, like, subscribe. Email me, trig at davidtrig.com, and I will see you next time. Thank you for listening to The David Trigg Show. Find the complete archive at davidtrig.com or subscribe for free through the podcast app on iTunes or Stitcher on Android. Each week, we bring you a message of joy, success, and personal power in spite of fear, anxiety, and depression. Because as we like to say, though there's pain in the night, Gozo comes in the morning.